<laughs> what a story, James. Hey guys, this is my review for The Disaster Artist, the film made by James Franco and Dave Franco based on the true events that happened in the creation of the world's worst slash best movie ever, The Room. Now admittedly I was a little hesitant going into this film mainly because I just thought it was going to be a parody based story with a bunch of Franco and Seth, Frank and Seth Rogen's friends just kind of pulled in just to play random people and it's just a parody, kind of like the interview or just a story with a lot of comedic bits in it. However, it's not. It's actually a really interesting conundrum. It is a true story, and it is a respectful true story. It just so happens that the story itself is absolutely hysterical. This is some of the best acting I've seen James Franco do in a while. I'm not freaking kidding. He incredibly embodies the actions and the mannerisms of Tommy Wiseau. You almost think he is actually the guy. It is creepy how well he gets the voice, the laugh. He has the laugh down. But just the odd mannerisms of the dude. He embodies him so well that it's only that he's Franco that you can keep watching him. Because if you were watching the actual Tommy Wiseau do this, you would be terrified to see a gargoyle. Now admittedly, that was something that... I was kind of interested to see, because I've heard that there was a lot of really, really strange events that happened during the filming of this movie. I've read tidbits and seen little tidbits of Greg Sestero's book that the film is based off of, and there was one part I was actually kind of hoping wasn't going to be in the movie, it was a scene, or a part in the story where uh, Greg and Tommy went out to a restaurant, and Greg specifically remembers Tommy requesting warm water. Not boiled water, but a glass of warm water. I was hoping that would have appeared. It's a really weird little thing, but I've always felt that was just a, a really eye-opening look into the character of who Tommy is. And this movie does it to the extent that they are limited to. Because they only have as much information as Greg does, and they only have as much information as Tommy is willing to give who is still freaking mysterious about everything that he's done. The film follows Greg, played by Dave Franco, uh, going off with Tommy Wiseau, played by James, and he finds that Tommy just has this energy and this really strange but welcoming mannerism that he moves with him to Los Angeles because apparently he just is able to afford two apartments off of money you have no idea which exists. And they try to get into the acting biz but they keep on having issues and Tommy is having no luck so what they do is they create their own movie and Tommy writes, writes the script of The Room and absolute calamity happens. This movie has a lot more depth into it than I thought it does. There's a lot more emotional moments, there's a lot of very uncomfortable moments that I didn't think was going to happen and admittedly as uncomfortable as I felt during certain scenes like the scene where he's talking to Tommy is talking to Judd Adipo and in the trailer it looks really funny because Judd Adipo says not in a million years but after that now that seemed really funny in the trailer right but the whole scene itself is very awkward he's acting out this scene from Shakespeare in front of him very loudly and very it's very uncomfortable for everyone on the scene so the fact that they did add these elements into the film adds an extra layer that I wasn't expecting and I appreciate for that. Especially the fact that the film is constantly on a shoulder cam. I don't think there's a steady shot throughout. It really helps emulate the sort of mockumentary, not mockumentary, but like a documentary sort of reenactment. And that's what I thought was so intriguing and really pulled you into this movie and it actually made you care for this weird ass looking gargoyle person. Because at the end of the movie when the film is premiered and Tommy is really uncomfortable and starts to cry, you actually feel for this weird ass little dude. <laughs> the thing that I did like too is that they didn't pull any punches, at least for how extremely strange and very shady some of the on-set practices were. The fact that they filmed a sex scene on an open set is a 
big fabo. That's a huge no-no in the film industry. The fact that they worked in a warehouse that had no AC. That's the thing. I think that this movie is a lot more than just a comedy. It's actually a true story that, as I said, just how happens to be an absolutely ridiculous true story. And everyone's really good in it. Admittedly, I think Dave Franco is just Dave Franco. I haven't really seen him be anything else besides the asshole he was in Scrubs, that unholy season 9. But, I don't know, Dave Franco's okay. But I really like that the friendship between the two is a believable friendship in terms of what they go through. The hardships, the near breakup, and just the positions that... Tommy put everyone in again it's a very interesting movie it is a funny movie I'll admit that you will be laughing quite a bit throughout the whole film but you're also gonna feel uncomfortable and you're also gonna be sitting there going how the fuck did this movie get made and honestly that's probably one of the biggest things that I kind of wish that this movie delved a little bit into I wish Franco would just I don't know if not uh, Tommy giving up the information I wish he had gone to a little bit of an extra length to figure out just how certain aspects were. Like, I admit, I kind of respect him for the idea of not delving into those aspects because the end credit where they talk about how they don't know how old he is, where he's from, or where he got the money from is a little bit of a funny tidbit, but I really do wish they actually had answered that because that would have been a little bit more depth. Otherwise, I feel this is a very uncomfortable, yet very engaging and very funny true story film that just so happens to be about the world's only human gargoyle. In the end, I'm gonna give The Disaster Artist a six out of seven. I enjoyed it. I don't know if I'd watch it all over and over and over again, like other comedies that the guys have done, just because, like I said, it, it gets a little bit mm, at times, but I love at the end of the film that they do a lot of cross comparisons of scenes that they shot, like shot for shot, movement for movement from the room, and they play them side by side. I thought that was a great idea. Even though it doesn't really add anything to the movie, it's just funny. Oh wait, I actually almost forgot. I went and saw The Room at the Rio Theater, the theater that James Franco supposedly got, supposedly got first introduced to The Room, and well, they were giving out these. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. I'm, this is awesome. I love it. They were giving these away for free. I'm kind of thinking of putting them up on the wall. But anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this review. Thank you for watching. Uh, I just wanted to also say Last Jedi comes out tonight, so there will be a review sometime in the AM very early tomorrow morning. And if you like this video, leave a like down below. And if you want, maybe subscribe. Either way, I'm very thankful that this movie got made. I'm also thankful that The Room got made because then we also got this sweet remix as well. You got this.